research uh, uh, about uh, e-fishery and your uh, your background stories. I'm really looking forward to your uh, to your talk. Um, uh, Jurgen in, uh, invited you. Um, you are uh, now at uh, Global School, and uh, Global School is uh, is a University of Applied Sciences where our, all our students um, are starting their own business uh, while they're getting their bachelor degree. So it's not a, a biology uh, uh, education program uh, such as your own background, uh, but it's really hands-on uh, helping people establish businesses. So I'm uh, really looking forward to your uh, to your story um, and what I had in mind, if that's okay with you, is I would like to start out with where you currently are, so how, what you're currently doing with e-fishery and then go back to the beginning, um, like wh why you joined high school, what you did and then move into the operation and the, the journey, how you got to where you currently are and then the lessons uh, you learned along the way. Would that be uh, okay for you? Yes, yes, perfect. Yeah. I also prepared some materials that I can show later uh, to give you uh, some visualization about the journey as well. Okay, great, awesome. Um, well, um, uh, uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce it correctly, but uh, uh, um, one of our learning coaches is from Indonesia, and she told me Selamat datang. So uh, <laughs> I hope I pronounced it correctly, but uh, welcome uh, to uh, to Global School. And uh, I would like to give the floor to you um, to uh, um, uh, explain a little bit of what eFishery currently does and uh, uh, what you uh, see as uh, the biggest uh, uh, successes uh, you achieved. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So it, uh, really thanks a lot for the opportunity. Thanks, Jurgen, for inviting. Uh, it's, been, it's been a while since the last time I had a, a chat and uh, in touch with uh, people from Get Entering. So it's, I'm really happy to be uh, here. And regarding eFishery, I'll, I'll tell a little bit more later about what, what eFishery is currently doing and the whole business model. But in general, we started off as an IoT uh, solution. Uh, so we create a machine that helped the, uh, to fit the fish automatically. We, we were focusing on the fish uh, and shrimp farming sector, uh, aquaculture sector, which is uh, not that popular in, 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 in Europe. But in Indonesia, we were the second largest aquaculture producer in the world. We have 3.5 million of fish farmers and and 40 million of fish farms all across Indonesia. So it's a pretty uh, big sector, sector for us. And and then we we built technology for that, uh, starting from the uh, automated feeding solution, which I will uh, tell about it later. Uh, but right now we already start different kind of services. We're providing financing, uh, working with the financial institution by creating a pay later limit and build uh, credit scoring on top of the data that we have. We also providing feed as well, working with the feed manufacturers uh, using the data data and predictive model that we have to provide an on-demand feed delivery services to the farmers. And then lastly, we also help them offtake the fish because we're able to take how many fish that they will be harvested and sell it to the restaurants and the uh, uh, seafood buyers. Uh, so right now we see ourselves more like, more like an, an end-to-end players, like a contract farming model, but more for the digital era. So in terms of the reach, we still focus in Indonesia. We're uh, 24 province in Indonesia. So it's, uh, it's around 70% of 70% of Indonesian area. We have thousands of farmers and tens of thousands of uh, ponds, uh, part of our ecosystem. We're also doing a commercial pilot right now in uh, Thailand, Vietnam, India, and Bangladesh. And in terms of the headcounts, we're 200 plus people uh, right now in the team. We're uh, Series B. Uh, we just closed uh, our Series B investment uh, last month. So, oh, congratulations! Yeah, uh, that's about us. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, the participants also know that if they want to ask questions, they should type it in the chat. And uh, what I will try to do is uh, host uh, host the session. So uh, you don't have to mind the chat. Uh, I will do that for you so that you can focus on your story and um, uh, and, and, and providing us with insights. Um, uh, so, so you've, you've uh, I, I did search, uh, but some uh, big changes or big changes, big addings to uh, what you were current, what you were doing in the past uh, uh, um, evolved in the last uh, year and a half then. 
Um, so uh, now an end-to-end, -end, which is an extension of what you had previously. Um, the financing, is that, does it also have to do with your uh, aim as a purpose to, uh, to help the region? Yep, yep. Because what you're doing is uh, then, if I understand correctly, is that you are helping farmers to move into the 21st century with the technology, the financing, the data, analytics, and that type of thing. Yep, correct. Yeah, cool. Um, I, I, I heard your story about how you got started, um, uh, how you got into uh, fishery. Can you, can you explain a little bit about that story? Um, bring you back yeah. to your uh, to your uh, class uh, in, uh, in in biology in aquaculture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, initially, because I studied biology, and and back then when I studied biology, uh, since the second year in college, I had my my family has a has a financial issue, so I had to tell my family uh, I want to help them. And then uh, since second year, the third semester, I I tell them then they don't need to send me any money. Uh, they don't need to pay any tuition because because I know that they're, they're in problem. Uh, so I have to manage it myself and, and try to work my ass off to, to find a way uh, to make a living. And at some point, uh, I, I do a lot of stuff back then. And after uh, one point, then I, I got in an entrepreneurial opportunity when I, I was a tutor, a biology tutor back then. And then there was this opportunity from the uh, from a company that providing me with the with, with a project. Uh, long story short, uh, then I got, uh, I started some small businesses uh, from the tutorial uh, businesses uh, to uh, vegetable selling. And, and then I have some savings. And when I went to third year in college, I started uh i attended a class called aquaculture so there's just the one class that related to aquaculture in 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 the faculty then i studied about that and i and the professor was was very inspiring he told me about uh how the the in the future the aquaculture uh the world will rely more on the aquaculture because of the few reasons uh, because that the aquaculture is one of the uh, least uh, intensive uh, animal protein provider uh, on the fact that also uh, it needs less uh, land and less water to to provide it and so it will be uh, one of the cheapest animal protein solution uh, then uh, that's where the that that towards that and also one of the story that there's one uh, famous uh, fish uh, in in Southeast Asia back then. It's called dory fish. It's like a finding dory name, but it's actually catfish. So they they created this uh, like this dory uh, fish, but actually catfish. And we produce catfish a lot. And he predicted that in the next five years, uh, back then it's it was 2009 uh, back then. In the next five years, dory fish, which is catfish, uh, it's a low end uh, fish in Indonesia, will be everywhere. So it convinced me to start my own uh, catfish farm uh, back then. After I attended the class, I was so inspired by that. Then I started uh, to find a pond that I can uh, rent. So that's where- yeah, What I really uh, liked uh, in, in the, as a preparation, I saw your talk um, and the professor said something really important. And I, I think it's a mindset uh, quote as well. Uh, either you uh, are part of it or you uh, you see how it evolves, right? So, or, or what did he tell you? Yep, yeah, yeah. Uh, he mentioned literally that uh, well, it, there will be like revolution of catfish in Indonesia. Uh, catfish will be everywhere in the top and restaurants and the five star hotels. So either you be you'd like to be part of it or you just watch uh, in 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 the site. So that's that's uh, would you be on that part of the catfish revolution so that's that's the way that yeah. uh, he says yeah, i think it. it's really nice because it's uh, it's also a choice that our students have to make um are you going to uh, be an observer or are you going to make it happen and uh, um, i think it's a really great quote um something that should uh, trigger and, uh, and and be compelling to uh, all of us uh, because you're among entrepreneurial uh, students now um, I think that they all should want to uh, uh, be part of uh, something, uh, of, of, a, of a revolution or of an impact or of something happening. So uh, you can either be an observer or, uh, or create it or be part of it. 
So uh, I, I really like that uh, that quote. Sorry for interrupting, but I think that's a uh, really important decision that you made that started off this journey because till then you were already entrepreneurial, but you didn't know anything about fish, correct? Yep, yep, correct. I didn't know anything about fish. Uh, I, I only know that I got A in aquaculture, but everyone that attended the class get <laughs> get an A. So that's why it's called an, an A class. <laughs> and that's why it's a, it's a pretty uh, crowded class because everyone wants to get an A. Uh, but that's only the reason I, I, I understand about aquaculture. But yeah, I just know that this is an opportunity. And, and as all of the entrepreneurial journey, right, you, you believe in that one idea that in the future can be much more valuable than what, what it is right now. So then I decided that I want to invest my energy, my time, and also my savings to start building something that might worth uh, more in the future. So that's uh, the thing. And Gibral, Gibral, it's funny to me because um, uh, th th there were how many people in the class at that time? Because it's pretty crowded. You 200, 200 plus. Yeah, how many how many got into the catfish business? No, I'm the only one. <laughs> I think I'm the only one. That got into <laughs> so, so there is something special here, but it is it is <laughs> the determination to uh, to be part of something. It's a choice, right? Um, and I know that there is also uh, something. We'll get into that later about your vision about luck and uh, uh, um, uh, making your own choices and and, and creating. I'm looking at my notes. Um, that uh, uh, being privileged and uh, and, and, and making uh, well really uh, important choice yourself, but also portion of luck. Uh, but we'll get in that later. Um, but what I really like is that you say, well, we all had the same lectures, um, but you decided to make a choice to create something out of it, out of the inside. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I think it connects really well with our previous module who uh, that was about the entrepreneurial mindset and, and making deliberate choices also to, uh, to, uh, to, to give a fuck and to do something. So uh, to me, that's really uh, a really interesting part because it really connects with your story. So sorry for interrupting, but I uh, think it's a uh, really big insight uh, uh, that uh, our students should feel uh, uh, connected to. Okay, sorry for interrupting. Uh, so, you, so you did this biology class um, and you decided to yep. uh, go into uh, catfish. Uh, what did you do? Yep, yep. So I'll show you some of the slides to so give you some visuals, if, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. Uh, let me check. Okay, so hopefully you can see the class. Uh, so when I started uh, my own fish farm, so this is actually the fish farms that I had. So I, I rent it up for uh, $30 per year. So it's it's very cheap, uh, actually. So just for $30 per year, I have this like big uh, farms that I started uh, doing it. And I, I because I'm, I'm quite an impulsive uh, person. So when I had this idea, then I started renting it and I, I just spread out the baby fish and, and feed it. And then in two months, I get a bigger fish and I, I, I can sell it. But I actually forgot when I started uh, that I hey, I needed uh, to sell the fish after harvest. I just said, oh, I need to start the business, but I forgot that I have to sell it. So I didn't have the buyers. I didn't have the market, which is, which is pretty problematic for us because in Indonesia, every freshwater fish needs to be sold alive. Uh, so you, you have to sell it, sell it right away. Uh, because if you wait, if it's if it's getting too big, we, we eat the whole fish, right? If it's getting too big, then uh, people wouldn't uh, eat it. So I had a hard time in the first harvest because I already, uh, I, I couldn't find the buyers. Uh, most of the buyers are the small food vendors. Uh, I go to small food vendors. I, I remember correctly that I harvested around 130 kg and I have to sell uh, sell it uh, for buyers that on, they can only buy three kg. Then uh, I, I can't do that. Then, then I had to sell it to the middleman back then. So I had to sell it to the middleman which only what one cent uh, per kg uh, that I uh, the profit would be not one cent ten around ten cents uh, U.S. dollar per per kg uh, the profit. So I only so uh, only one get cent hundred, per kilo. Uh, ten cents, sorry, not one cent. Ten, so ten, so ten cents. Ten sorry, cents ten profit cents per kilo. kilo. Yeah, yeah. 
and I only had like 130 kilo. So uh, that's the only uh, money that I was making in the first harvest. It's pretty bad because, uh, because I didn't have the buyers. And because I already rented it for one year, so I have to figure out what, what I want to do for the next cycles. Uh, then I started and uh, the issue was uh, I can't sell it right away. Right? What if I, I process it, I just do a fillet uh, and then uh, created the uh, processed uh, fish uh, out of it. So I, it, it wouldn't matter whether I, uh, when I would harvest it. So then when I started building this, so, so inspired by that Dory story, I created this uh, small food uh, business, Dory. So I had to miss classes because I had to uh, uh, to serve uh, customers in this uh, Dory uh, stuff. And then from that, it's, it's actually uh, kicking off pretty well. Uh, so from one branch, uh, people like it uh, because I, I did a test uh, to a lot of students back then. Uh, to test whether they can tell the difference is is it catfish or not, and none of them tell it's catfish. So some of them tell it's grouper, uh, others tell tell it uh, snapper, so it's a high end fish. Even one of the students tell it that it is a salmon, which is uh, I believe they they never he never ate salmon in in his life because because it's it's a white fish. Uh, so uh, long story short, I had this, and then it's it started from just one idea to. Uh, helped me selling the uh, fish to seven branches. So I, I created seven small these branches in the different uh, universities in Indonesia. Uh, then it's just making pretty good money. And then it's what, what's growing uh, because I already secured the demand. And it's what's growing my uh, food business. And then this, that's just, uh, where uh, the food business is getting into. So we started from one point that I rented out, then I, can, I was able to buy a land uh, to 24 ponds. Then when I was graduated in 2012, then I own uh, 76 uh, ponds myself. So that's where I became like a fully blown uh, fish farmer that is more professional. And then <clears throat> yeah, when I was graduated, I was uh, thinking, I believe there's one book that I really like about, uh, is it good to great by Jim Collins, right? And one quote that I remember uh, that is as good is the enemy of great. And I, I it, it keeps, I keep that in my mind that good is damn great. And if I, I want to start this fish business, I want to be a great, uh, greatest fish farmers of all time. Right? I want to be the greatest like fish restaurants of all time. If, if I want to do that, then I started thinking and shopping some ideas, whether I can grow the business, then how uh, do I grow the business? Then I started talking to different kinds of uh, fish farmers. One of the biggest fish farmers in Indonesia that I talked to owns 3,000 farms. Uh, <clears throat> and I spoke to, to him to, uh, to ask about guidance. Uh, how, what should I do uh, about this? Uh, what should I, be, I do about the fish business? How can I be as big as what uh, he was back then? Then, uh, and I also asked what, what's the challenge in the managing a bigger uh, fish farming business? And he mentioned that uh, the main challenge is on the feeding cost, which is 70 to 90% of the total cost. And it's, it's big because uh, feeding, they have to feed manually using the human labor. And sometimes the labor, uh, you can't really monitor the labor, right? Uh, because sometimes the labor steal the feed and sell it to the other farm. So he can't tell the difference because uh, the feed is underwater. Uh, so you can't uh, tell the difference. You can't see the fish. You can see whether the uh, feed is there or not. So it happens a lot. Uh, so the fish uh, becomes, uh, sorry, the feed becomes the most uh, important issues. And then hearing that story, somehow I was, I, I saw that, that opportunity and then suddenly impulsively I said, hey, what if I can create a machine that, that you can uh, feed the fish automatically using a smartphone? And then, he, yeah, he didn't believe it uh, back then, but because I was uh, graduated from, from a tech uh, university in Indonesia, even when I, uh, when I had a bachelor from, from biology, he didn't know that. He knew that I'm from like the MIT of Indonesia. He, he thinks that I can build a robot out of it. Every MIT graduate can build a robot. Even uh, he thinks that every ITV graduate can build a robot. Oh, I, can, I can use it as, as my, and, and my benefit. I can, hey, yeah, I can uh, build it. I'm a, a graduate from ITV. And, and then they said, that, okay, uh, then how much was it? I just said some random numbers and saying, hey, if, if you can really make that work, 
all of my farms, which is 2,000, 3,000, all of my farms will use your technology. And then, wow, this is an opportunity. Then I started uh, convince, um, convincing myself that this is even much better opportunity than starting my own farm because we have tens of thousands of farms in uh, uh, millions of farms in Indonesia. So, and, and it's everywhere. So this is just, for example, this is all of, all of this is a fish and shrimp farms. It's in one small area, it's owned by a uh, smallholder uh, farmers. So it's a big, huge industry in Indonesia. And everyone has a, has a uh, feeding issues. And this is the way that uh, they did it back then. So it's a very traditional, and every minute the feed is floating in the water, the nutrition goes uh, uh, runoff in the water. So it's bad to, for the environment, it kills the fish. And it's also bad for the business. And, and this is also real because I recorded it myself. They have to go inside of the pond and fit the fish uh, that way. So yeah, I think I saw that as an opportunity. Then I, I started thinking, hey, I don't need to start uh, a food, fish food business or, or start my own farm. It's actually, I, I can start the technology uh, and technology is, would be more scalable and and in 2012, when I, I started having this idea, it's just uh, like a beginning phase of the, of the what, uh, uh, kicking off of the whole tech ecosystem because all of the unicorns right now in Indonesia started uh, funded, getting funding uh, back then in 2012. So well, I think uh, the funding is there, the market is there, uh, the infrastructure will, will get there uh, sooner or later. Then I, I started pursuing this idea on a fishery. <clears throat> so yeah, and then after the idea of fishery, fishery, I realized that I, I really don't understand about this technology. I don't understand about the electronics, engineering, mechanical engineering. I'm a biologist, right? And then I'm, I'm a biologist that even not, not a very good biologist. I'm a fish farmer. So how <laughs> do I do that? Uh, and then in the way that I sell it, I, I just started Googling about, about this and then I found an idea, uh, inspiration from a water sprinkler. Sp sprinkler. Uh, and if it's automatically uh, uh, triggered by the uh, heat, for example, by fire, and then it's, it can sprinkle the water, uh, spread the water. And we can change the idea if we triggered by something and, and spread uh, feet, then it, it works the same way. Then I started building some drawings and hiring some a uh, vocational uh, high school graduate and I uh, asked one of my uh, friends that has a get uh, as garage that I can use uh, so I can build it so this is uh, the the first uh, efficiency that I built so I think for the first efficiency you can see that it was not all fancy I used this just the same uh, box uh, and using this box, uh, I have this uh, second-hand aluminum aluminum uh, tank, and then using the fit outlet. And you can also see this is the used uh, <laughs> CD, uh, and then yeah, you put the fit inside of it. And then putting some sensor with the battery. And I think the idea was, uh, I sent it an SMS back then because the idea was how it's a mobile base and report base. And it says, it's the using Blackberry sending the SMS and it's activating the machine. And then after it's activating the machine, then it sends the report through SMS. So this is, the early uh, prototype of a fishery and it received the SMS uh, after it's done uh, feeding the fish. Anyway, the most ridiculous part of that is you see the video, right? Uh, but even with that video, because I'm not, I'm not an engineer, I can't really crack how to build the technology, but I have to build what people call right now MVP, right? And minimum viable product. So the, in order to build it, I create that, that video, but when I send an SMS, it's not sending the SMS to a machine. It's sending the SMS to one of my friend that is was not on the frame, that uh, like plug 
putting plug on the on the machine so the machine is running and after that uh the machine stopping is uh put out the plug and then sending the sms from his phone so that's the way that i do it and then i go to to all of the farmers and say hey i have the product wow the products looks real do you want to do it if you want to buy it you have to sign this uh, contract uh, as a pre order but then i i have uh, i run to uh, tens and dozens of uh, farmers then i i validate my my idea i don't really need to build the whole stack of technology just build like this uh, cr- crappy uh, prototype with a with a simple video then i have the the same vp to uh, con- to convince myself that this is the idea worth pursuing because people want to buy it so i we didn't have the this mvp or lean startup back then but i just know that i don't have any money but i have to sell it uh, so it's, i uh, I, uh, Gibran, I was that something before. you learned from uh, the, having the fish farm and not being able to sell the fish on the first uh, uh, first batch Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, definitely. That's one of the things that I uh, learned uh, back then that I had to uh, figure out and finding the market right? uh, because the market is important. And I learned back then and I start building something, uh, just fish, then I can sell it. And it makes problematic. And I have one idea, then the idea needs to have a cus- uh, customer. And right now it's just entirely new idea, entirely new technology. And, and even the customers don't know that they, uh, they need it. So it's even more risky. So I have to uh, validate, uh, validate it myself on, on that. And the other part that I, I also still have my own business. Uh, so when I want to jump to the new business, I have to assure that this is something that worth uh, doing uh, full time. So uh, to managing the risk, then I, I don't want to uh, overly invest for the idea that, that can't really work. So and the yeah. most important it's, part uh, is- uh, Giron, the, this is, uh, uh, this is interesting so. remark because uh, uh, yesterday we had a guest speaker uh, who uh, stressed the 80-20 um, and I said keep it at 80 because the 20 uh, takes 80% of your budget um, and then you started off with a quote from the Jim Collins book Good to Great uh, with uh, um, uh, good is the enemy of great um, but this is not something that's applicable in this phase of the company correct because yep. Uh, 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 this is a nice distinction to be made because the thing is m- one might think from uh, good is the enemy of great that um, uh, you you have to optimize everything before you go to the market but that's you mean okay. something else with that correct yep 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 when i mean good is very great if we, at the end it, it has to be doing something great right something great to the society, so it has to do great market uh, opportunity, and it makes some great changes to to the whole sector. So that's what I meant by that, not just it started, needs to be perfect uh, thing. Uh, all of the business as what I was uh, mentioning is this, it needs to start from small uh, and, as, uh, and start early. So we can learning from that uh, whole uh, growth curve and optimizing uh, based on that experience. Yeah, so having having a comfortable life and being comfortable is a, is a, is a big uh, threshold to uh, sticking your neck out, taking a risk and trying something uh, that has an impact. Um, so that's with the uh, good is the enemy of great. And in this case, you really try to bootstrap and, and to do a minimal viable product and do a, a, a prototype with even some, some fake stuff uh, just to get the message across to f- start testing if there's a market. I think it's an awesome example of uh, uh, bootstrapping, effectuation and lean startup. So uh, thanks for sharing this, uh, this with us. Yeah, my yeah, pleasure. Yeah, so when I was convinced that this is the idea worth pursuing, I understand that I don't really have the expertise. I have some pre-order uh, from sub, uh, dozens of uh, farmers already then. I I got my co-founder, which is it comes from the technical background, analytical engineer, then start uh, to build this together, and then by building this together, we we agreed that we want to do this and committed ourselves. My co-founder owned a software house as well, so we went on the same college, uh, same uh, year, uh, different uh, uh, major, but then we met again, and then after we met. We, we said uh, this is uh, the idea are, are you willing to commit to the idea if you're willing to commit to the idea we we can i can give you split shares uh, evenly but
but you have to do it full time, which means that any business that you're currently in, you have to sell it. So he sold his software house uh, business. And I also uh, sold my like food business uh, to my partners. And for fish farming business, I also got out uh, from the fish farming business. I still own my fish farming business, but I got out from the day-to-day operation uh, from the fish farming business. And then uh, go full-time on that. And by uh, going full-time, we started very early. We rented a, a house when we live uh, there. Uh, the engineers are also live there. I got married on the same year. I, I started officially in October 2013. Got married in November 2013, a month after I started officially. And my wife and I also live on the same office where I, uh, uh, when all of the engineers and the co-founders also live there. So it was not pretty, but yeah, that's that's how we got started. And this is the like early phase of which we started. We need to start it from something, right? We know that the idea of which needs to be like a mobile and a cloud based, but we started from a simple uh, this, and then uh, we use acrylic uh, to. Uh, serve uh, the first customers and it's just just to adding to uh, the first point this is already commercial we already have customers but our product is not even good you, we use uh, acrylic that is uh, no aesthetics of the whole design uh, but the most important part is the product needs to work and it needs to go to the market then we, we can uh, iterate uh, afterwards so it doesn't need to be perfect be, uh, after its first launch and if, if if it's not if you were embarrassed with the first launch, then you're doing the right thing. It's, that's what Red Hoffman keeps saying. So we built it, and on the house that we rented, the house has a ba- basement. Then we we do the manufacturing in that basement, so it's not also uh, a healthy life because we we inhale pain every every day because we have we do this manufacturing stuff, and then we move. Uh, to us, we do some rapid prototyping, and we are blessed by uh, by uh, having building the technology in the era when we have three uh, D printing. So it's it's very easy right now to build any technology. So uh, yeah, so that's uh, the whole uh, prototype that we built, uh, and the end uh, technology finally that we currently call it uh, like a full blown uh, technology. So we, if it is more like we just started on the SMS base and then moved towards to the uh, black box like a calculator, uh, and then we we move towards to uh, mobile based and and the sensor based uh, uh, industry. And then when we uh, fully commercialized it in 2015, mid 2015, industry was the uh, automatic feeding technology that has a sensor that can sense the fish appetite and uh, adjust the feed given based on the appetite and sends the data to the cloud. So it's a mobile uh, based, uh, cloud based and sensor based technology. And we use uh, different kind of uh, sensors right now. We have two types of sensors. The first is acceleration based sensor. We are sensing the movement of the fish. When the fish is hungry, they tend to be aggressive. When the fish is uh, full, they tend to be less aggressive, just as, just like us in a way. So, and the <laughs> other is, is we use acoustic based sensor. So we put a microphone inside of the water that hear the, the yum yum, the chop chop sound when the fish is eating. So when they stop eating, uh, which means they're already full, then we stop the uh, feeding. And then the design is much better than the design that it, it actually wa- was. Uh, so when we start commercializing right now, this is the industry design. We uh, have the, an app, we have the dashboard. Uh, finally, the mobile app when uh, they're putting in the app, and right now the farmers use the mobile app like a lockbook. When the fish dead, uh, they're putting in the app. When they harvest the fish, they're also putting in the app. And any information related what brand of it that they're using, they put it on the app. So we have different kind of data information. Uh, and then we have dashboard uh, to use it. And then we grow pretty fast. In the last three years, we grow uh, thousands percentage. We grow tens, five uh, X every year uh, right now. We're all across Indonesia. And some countries in in uh, in Southeast Asia as well. And the most interesting part is we also get a lot of data information from that, right? Because we know how many fish that they harvested, we know how many uh, feed that they're using. So practically, we know their margin. And because we know grow margin, we know their historical part of the margin, whether the margin is impacted by the changes of the uh, uh, environment. Uh, so uh, we can 
built some credit scoring specifically for the fish farmers and the, for the fish farming business. And then we start uh, offering this credit scoring, working with the financial institution to provide uh, financials, uh, financing to the farmers. And then we get a fee and margin from that. And then from, uh, we also built- Gibran, uh, I question. Yep. Do you sure, sure. also get uh, customers that can now pay for your machines because of it? Uh, no, no, we, because right now it's a, it's a pretty uh, uh, cheap compared to the whole operating cost that we have. Well, right now, the model is a subscription based. They have, they have to pay on the monthly basis and only $30, which is, which is pretty affordable uh, for them. So we don't have that. And one of the interesting part is we have a 0% churn rate uh, of the customer. So, which means that the that, uh, retention rate is 100%, which will every customer that using the technology keep using it all time. So that's Does that mean also you also showing have to uh, service the machines? Yeah, well, we, we have to do the maintenance of ours. So it's more like a rental model though. We manufacture ourselves and then they rent, they rent it out from us. So we, it's still our own asset that we have to build. Yeah, Ibram, we have a good question from Jasper in the chat. Um, he says, uh, farmers are in, uh, in a pretty traditional craft. Um, uh, uh, what was their first reaction to use this advanced technology? How did you get them to adopt uh, the, 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 the robot, so to speak? Uh, um, how did you convince them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a very good question. Uh, they, the thing is, we, we didn't actually. We didn't convince them initially uh, why they want to use it because it's it's not, they're not familiar with the technology. It's an IoT, they never heard about IoT. Uh, they, they don't even use any smartphone uh, back then when we started uh, selling this idea. So it's a very uh, alien solution for them. So it's, it's very hard to convince. But we know that uh, once they use it, it's much better because wh when they only use uh, manual feeding, they, they they're, we're only able to feed the fish three, four or five times per day. Uh, but right now using the machine, you can feed the fish 40 times per day. Uh, so fish will grow better, but it's hard to convince them to, to even use it. And do, the way that we use it, we found out that uh, the first 10 customers that ended up using our product, uh, we stand a, a question of whether, uh, why they want, they want to use our product. And then I was, uh, uh, the only salesman in the company, right? And I kept coming to their uh, ponds every day. And 100% of those first customers say that uh, they want to use the technology because Gibran keeps coming. I, I, I pity Gibran. I want to help Gibran. So it's a very uh, personal re uh, relations. And one of the farmers uh, used seven brands of feed. And I asked him, why do you seven brands of feed? Do you use run A-B testing, split testing or not? No, 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 the salesperson keeps coming. I don't have a heart to say no. So it's a very <laughs> compelling idea. And then I, I found, him, I found him, oh, in that case, then I, I just need to recruit a feed salesperson and then give a pitch. The pitch was, hey, I, I get the target from this company. Can you help me use this? And then that's what we, our first pitch. The sales pitch was not very, not fancy. We don't sell the product. We sell the relationship uh, to the farmers. But after the first transaction, we have to assure that the product can work. So after the product can work, then we show the data. And that's what stick them to use more because we show the results. And then after the results, then the network effects uh, speaks uh, louder uh, because uh, the other farmers say, hey, the, uh, the, that farmers keep using this technology and adding more and more units to their ponds. It, makes, it means the technology is working and then uh, the farmers will speak themselves. And then this community then starting start to build. So I think what, what I'm trying to say is you need to find an entry point. The entry point is not always about your product. And sometimes it, it's never about the product. Right? It's, it's about the customers, whether the customer wants to use it. And in order for the customer to use it, it's, it could be like a compelling sales pitch, it could be a good distribution channel, it could be a good partners. It could be as simple as a, as simple as a personal relationship that you have to build to the farmers. But any Anything that works uh, can work. And, and once that works, then you have to prove that your product can give that value. 
and and that's uh, the product will speak themselves and then it, it what drives the growth afterwards yeah cool really interesting yeah 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 so uh, uh, then i started building the feet because naturally i know how many feet that they're using initially they buy the feet to the feed stores because they only buy the feed in the small quantity what we're doing is we are able to predict how many feet that they need and when then we can aggregate it so it's more like a group buy we aggregate it then all of these farmers has a, a capability to buy uh, wholesale directly to the feed manufacturers and then we ship it on demand on the day that they need it on the pickup points so we're more like a feed distributors, but we don't need any asset, any warehouses, any shipping, because we use this data that we have. And on the other side, uh, I remember uh, earlier when I, I was a fish farmer myself, I had an issue to sell the fish. And it is because I have to sell it alive. And when I sell it alive, I harvest in the large quantity. And the buyers is uh, restaurants that buy in a small quantity every day. So right now when I have the data, we can solve that because we were able to predict how many fish that will be harvested. And before it's even harvested, we listed it in the marketplace. Uh, we, the, the prediction data and the buyers can pre-purchase it in the small quantity until it reaches the quota, then we ship it directly. So in that case, the farmers can get the better buyers because it's an end consumer the restaurants buyer compared to the middleman so much better margin for the farmers the buyers can also get the better quality and the lower uh, price uh, from that and when we get uh, we were and we're being a marketplace that uh, creating 25 percent margin uh, without owning any inventory because the inventory is on the on the farmer's ponds so right now that's the uh, the whole stuff so we're building we're selling like thousands of uh, tons of feet and thousands of tons of fish uh, already right now. So this month, the next month, we're targeting even uh, 3,000 of tons that we're are selling right now on top of the platform. And in terms of the total revenue last year, we are uh, exceeding $10 uh, million revenue uh, last year. Uh, and then it's, it's growing uh, 4x our revenue the year before. In 2018, it's a 2.4 uh, million. And the most interesting part, when you have a strong business and have a proposition, you can still, uh, you can get a strong unit economics as well. Because in, in the last two years, even with the three to four X growth, uh, we still have a EBITDA positive in, the, in two years compared to the other fast growing startups that uh, needs to sacrificing their margin and sacrificing their profitability. We don't have to compromise it because we have, we are in such a, such a lonely sector that we're the only player that providing this uh, value that we can capture the whole margin by ourselves. Yeah, cool. So yeah, and then, sorry, you have a question? No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead, Fibro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, back then on the story of Forget Enduring, I remember that I, I didn't know why I, I won't get Enduring actually, because uh, in 2014, you, you, you saw it and our product is pretty crappy. We don't even have a, have a traction, a strong traction back then. But, and my uh, competition back then was, was pretty strong, right? The, the, the MIT graduate, some, some Stanford graduate that's built some exciting AI and, and high tech technology and some series B startups. So I didn't know up until now why I, why I want, uh, I think it's more like I, I'm likable compared to the other uh, finalists. But one of the I think, most uh, important Jorge part is- uh, Jorge shared something about that with us. Jorge, can you explain why he won? Well, I think it was the, at the most, it was the passion. Um, I think uh, when you were on stage, the whole crowd kind of lifted because of kind of the passion that you were really uh, like uh, uh, saying, we're going to change the, the, the future of, of aqua, uh, aquaculture. Uh, and I think um, uh, you're, you're also downplaying yourself a little bit because if I see the business that you currently built and all the kind of the, the spin-off that comes out of it with the AI, the data, the, the, you're, you're such an entrepreneur that uh, I think uh, people already saw that back then, like the, the, the potential that, that the thing uh, you, were, you had then, the potential that it had. And that, yeah, that also kind of came, came to life, so. 
great, great. Glad to hear that from you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. From Get in the Ring, this were very interesting. We got started the idea in 2013, and we won Get in the Ring in 2014. We didn't have like a strong traction back then. And after Get in the Ring, we were pretty happy because it wasn't such an exciting event, right? It's an exciting pitching event. We met a couple of great friends there. Uh, we also and in Get in the Ring after Get in the Ring. I went to uh, Netherlands uh, and then uh, somehow when I, because it, I, I was in the Netherlands, right? And, and somehow in, when I was in Rotterdam, uh, this uh, aquaculture focused venture capital reached out to me and, and wants to have a call. And I said, hey, I'm in Rotterdam. Oh, I'm, I'm based in Utrecht. Can you come into Utrecht? I thought that he knew it from Get the Ring, but no, it's just uh, randomly, uh, uh, bros in the internet found about our website and reached me out and I happened to be in the Netherlands uh, back then and it's like what's part right now uh, let our seat round and let our series A round so we got uh, practically we didn't get an investment from Get in the Ring but we got it because we were in Get in the Ring we got this opportunity <laughs> because we were there and also one of the funny part is is uh, after getting the ring, we didn't get the investment right. We we get the investment opportunity. We talked to the investors, but the invest, investors said no because it's not on their sector. They don't invest in Indonesia and Asia Pacific for the reasons that I definitely fully understand. But uh, one of the media's tech in Asia misquote that we backs investment uh, from get in the ring, and it's all over the news. It's all over, literally all over the national news, top newspaper, local newspaper, everywhere. <laughs> so when I got home from Get in the Ring, I, I feel I felt like I'm a hero because I backed a one million euro investment, and then I'm I'm rich. But but no, I got back on the same office. It's pretty small, and I didn't have it. But then uh, it gives us hope as a as a company. Right? We 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 have this, and when I talk to the investors, and the investors uh, also know my our name. So he puts us on the radar. So thanks to Get in the Ring and the misquote from Tech in Asia, then we were very famous. And then it, it enables us to close the seat round. So we closed the seat round in 2015. So we wanted to get in the ring, I think it's 2014, uh, more or less, at the end of 2014. And in June 2015, we closed the investment from Icospar. Uh, the one that I met in Netherlands, uh, although not directly from uh, Get in the Ring. And then it's a 750k seat round, which is pretty big for uh, 2015 uh, startups back then. And we closed a uh, 4 million round in uh, Series A in 2018. We closed another round, Series B, 20 mil round uh, last month. So yeah, that's uh, the growth of that. And, and then it happens, it's, it started uh, the starting point of the whole investment started from the get in ring, even if directly uh, involves uh, the the network from the get in ring. But I'm I'm pretty I'm really uh, thankful from the whole experience that I was in. And as I mentioned, uh, right now we grow the business from just one person to uh, six person to right now to hundred plus uh, person. And then this is what I'm happy about. And we build the technology from scratch, and the technology can be inside of the uh, uh, the side of the beside the farmers and then it helps them on the day day to day basis it changes their lives and then it's it's everywhere uh, in indonesia and it helps them it changes the business it's, it creates a new category it disrupts the whole uh, sector uh, and then you yeah, were able to see that the product that we fight the most we pursue since the beginning uh, from a silly idea from a silly MVP that we started building it and now it's it's everywhere across the country so that's uh, one thing that I'm happy about uh, and all of the uh, energy that we built uh, we can do that so I, I think I get some lessons on that the first lessons we were uh, what I can say that scratch my own itch because uh, was a fish farmer then I came the idea because I scratched my 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 itch and then I talked to the other farmers it's that has the same itch then I scratched all of the itch of the other farmers as well which which is quite a compelling because we were understanding uh, our understanding about the issues uh, is is on the personal level and that's why I think uh, when I pitched the idea it's, it's more like a uh, the passion is there because it's it's my business my issues my problems when I started building Efficient Fresh, 
on the on that's online brokerage people don't really understand it but it's my problem so I will never when I was a fish farmer I can't sell my fish so I know that when I build the technology I know the problems exactly so I know what the solution uh, that I want to build then and the problems is very specific uh, to that sector then we can build it better than the other uh, people that uh, had that in the sector then I think it's just also uh, emphasizing on what we talked before. Right? We we need to start early and start small. Out of this 200 uh, people that attended in the class, only one uh, person started, uh, started uh, renting a $30 a year uh, fish farm. No one wants to start it. I mean, because they, they're in the prestigious university, they don't want to start uh, feeding the fish themselves in the $30 a year uh, fish farms, which, is, which was not pretty right and then i i believe a lot of uh, people think about this iot solution uh, or at least about the automatic feeding solution right but in not many of them started from building those videos starting building what uh, videos using a prototype from a compact disc they want to start from possibly uh, complete hardware and start building uh, an e-commerce and, and the whole solution. But we, we, we didn't, I didn't. We just started uh, from what I had, uh, from my new, and then started early and start small and then build it for right now from the whole ecosystem. Uh, we built, right now we're able to create a peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, create an e-commerce, uh, create a, an on-demand platform, not because we started uh, building uh, from that, sexy sector but we built from a from a quite a scrappy uh prototype when we started early and start small we we can go big later because we have that learning curve that's cool and then yeah and this is also uh, every idea that i built i built it uh quickly and then I, if i failed then i fell quickly as well uh, but if i built think fast I, I have this kind of learning uh about that uh solution what works and what not uh what uh, and what, uh, yeah, what needs to be built and what what doesn't really need to be built right now. Uh, so that's when we build it. We can build it staggered, and then the whole evolution of the idea could be uh, comes the natural and, and organic. And then we we can also have a, a compounded learning from that uh, process. And then yeah, and ultimately, uh, fundamentally, we have to start with why we you, I, you can. Uh, start around from any idea uh, and then uh, could be big uh, but when the idea starts from a strong reason and strong why then it, it what makes the difference it what, it what creates an energy and what and when you have the energy even when you have on the down lows then you can survive because because your why is, is strong and it what gives you uh, energy to to keep going forward and then I, I I think if we pursue something that is very important for the world, even if we are, we fail, the world is better because we we tried. And then yeah, uh, and when we start this technology, we we want to solve the real problems in society, and that's what what uh, what what keeps me running and what keeps me awake every day. And it's also what uh, engage the customers and gets the investors because it's not just about the product, it's not about the business. It's something more that we can create. It's something, uh, it's something bigger than ourselves, something bigger than the business itself because we can build a strong business in the fundamental and has a st strong growth, but can also make a dent in the universe. So yeah, I think that's about the, the sharing of the materials that I have. I really want to uh, learn more as well from the discussion that we will have later. Thank you very much, uh, Hibron. Uh, a really, truly amazing uh, uh, story um, and also uh, great visuals. So uh, thanks. That really helps us understand the, the magnitude of what you're doing. Um, and um, I, uh, I got uh, some questions in the, in the chat um, and uh, I'll, I'll try to connect it to what you just uh, ended up with is start with why. Uh, question from Jasper is, what do you see as a vision for e-fishery in the future? So, so where, what's next? Because you see that you incrementally, organically evolve over time. You started up with the feeding machines, then you added the, the, uh, the in intelligence, the data, the, the, the marketplace. Um, what's next? What do you see uh, e-fishery moving uh, to? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I'll I'll tell you a little bit of a story about what my my personal why. Uh, then uh, we go to what Ipushri wants to be. And then my personal why. Uh, I mentioned that uh, back then in college I had a financial issue in the family. Then I I didn't get money from my family. Uh, but it was pretty struggling for me because I didn't have any friends. This is a new town for me. I didn't have any friends. Didn't have any relatives. Uh, and then. Uh, at some point, I I run out of money, so I run out of money. But I I don't have any friends to borrow any money, uh, and I don't have a, a heart to ask uh, for money from my from my family because I know that they uh, they have an issue uh, back then. And then at some point, I I don't even have money to eat, so I can't eat. I only uh, drink from a tap water uh, from a mosque uh, here. And I couldn't eat from a three straight days uh, until I, I somehow got uh, money from uh, from one thing. So three straight three straight days, uh, three and days and nights. So sixty plus hours. I did don't have anything to eat. And so at some point, I really I was really starving. I couldn't. I don't have any uh, money to even go back to my uh, my home. So I have to stay in a mosque. I have to stay there for three days, and then uh, didn't have any food. And then uh, at some point I felt that I, I think I, 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 I would die from, from starvation because I was super hungry and I would die from starvation. And then I, I uh, at some point, uh, uh, eventually I, I had money, then I eat. But exactly that the morning after, I read in the newspaper, uh, then uh, about one person died from the starvation. Uh, starved to death. Then I, I cried myself out. At the beginning, I thought it, it is me. Then I, the ghost is reading the newspaper, and then <laughs> I was out of my body. But, uh, then I, I I realized that this is real. It's real problems. It's a real person that starved to death. And I I cried harder, even harder, because it's, it comes from in Indonesia. I mean, it, it happens in Indonesia. It happens in West Java as well, uh, in the highest GDP, GDP states in Indonesia. So it's a very ironic. We know that. I mean, we since the beginning we are uh, we are taught that Indonesia is a rich country with rich natural resources. But actually, no, because one person still starves to death, and we have even bigger problems because when we are uh, the third uh, country with the malnutrition issues. But after that, I I realized that in life I have to solve this. I want to like fight hunger. I don't want in my lifetime. Indonesia still have uh, people that starve to death. So I want. That's where that's my wife. Uh, my why I in in my reason in life is to, I want to fight uh, the the starvation and hunger at least in Indonesia. And in that fishery context. And uh, that's why we we call ourselves we, we want to fit the fish to fit the world uh, fit the fish fit the world that's our our jargon and and by doing that we want to uh, spread our impact right now our impacts in Indonesia what we're starting to do in Bangladesh we do it in India we do it in Vietnam we do it in in Thailand because in those uh, countries then we can give a strong impact uh, we can providing a cheaper a cheaper animal protein, we can build a much stronger and efficient uh, supply chain for a sector that can provide and protein. And I don't know if you're familiar with the stats, but to produce one kilogram of meat needs 16 times more feet compared to produce one kilogram of fish. So, and feed comes from the corn, from soy meal, from fish meal and stuff. So when you're eating fish more, you're actually saving uh, 16 kilograms of feed uh, for not, uh, uh, not by producing uh, meat. So uh, we want to make it sector more, much more efficient so people will, will uh, produce and eat more fish. Then we can have more uh, feed uh, to uh, feed the uh, people. So I think that's one of the things uh, on that. And the most interesting part and, and compelling part is when we are succeeding in one sector, it's not uh, it's not impossible for us to expanding to the other sector. So I know the name of fishery, uh, but when we we're succeed in fishery sector, we possibly can start from the other food sector. 
by working with our predictive model, our machine learning, our technology, our capabilities in the techn technology, uh, and how we can introduce the technology to the farmers level, we possibly can start to the others, agriculture sector that can help uh, more and more farmers and also solving uh, the problems for the food sector uh, in general. So yeah. So I think to answer it more briefly, we want to uh, spread, it, spread it more across, right? We're in Indonesia, we want to go to uh, Southeast Asia first, and then we want to go to South America and Africa later. So we have this uh, grand scheme of plan, uh, how we want to expand uh, uh, geographically by expanding all, all of our services uh, globally. And then we, we want to uh, adding more services vertically to the other new verticals. So. Cool, inspiring. An uh, awesome goal, of course. Um, uh, let me see, because everything uh, that we now ask is so practical uh, compared to your why and your uh, amazing mission. <laughs> that it, it, that's difficult for me to ask questions. <laughs> I'll start with Jurgens <laughs> regarding the color of the uh, uh, of the the, the, the devices. Uh, uh, was there a specific choice to do that marketing-wise? Um, to, to really get your green and blue uh, um, just with the distinctive colors uh, 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 visible and, and, and that the net to, to also facilitate the network effect that you talked about? Uh, not really. If you put it that way, I sound really smart, but uh, no, I, <laughs> because I had an intern, uh, unpaid intern that uh, I asked to design the logo. And then he has several uh, color options uh, from blue to green and this uh, tors, uh green and blue color. And then I yeah. decided to use this color because it's cute. So I think this is much cuter color. So let's use this, this color. So it's not really branding and marketing perspective and reason why I, we chose this color, but okay. yeah. Cool, yeah, but it's working out. <laughs> it's working out pretty well right now. People know this if you say color. So yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah I also uh, I also ask because uh, in the Netherlands we have a uh, a biking company and they rent bikes. And as you might might have seen a few years ago uh, in the Netherlands, everyone uh, rides on a bike, and uh, they uh, they started to rent out bikes with a blue tire. And now everywhere you look, you see those bikes with the blue tire. So that also was great marketing for them. And that kind of like uh, with uh, on every fish farm in uh, in Indonesia, seeing the same color kind of e-fishery feeders, uh, I thought of uh, kind of the same effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know it has the same effect, but it was definitely the reason why we chose this color. It's just a uh, pure luck. <laughs> Gibran, also uh, a question from Kenneth, uh, which might be interesting question. Um, if you are also moving to other uh, countries where maybe people uh, can't uh, read and write um, uh, English or whatever language you are uh, facilitating in the app, um, uh, do you also educate the farmers uh, uh, to be able to, uh, to actually work with the app? Uh, specifically for the app, yeah. If you, if they can read or write, it's really hard for us to for them to use our app because because yeah, for, or, or any other app because if they can read or write, we have to build some voice recognition which we don't have right now. But on the app, definitely we we do that. Uh, to and and actually we at the beginning I mentioned earlier that most of the farmers don't didn't use the smartphone. Right now, most of the farmers already use the smartphone uh, because the, all of the Chinese cheap smartphone that is penetrating rural area, which is great. But initially when we started uh, commercializing in 2014, 2015, we, most of the farmers don't have any smartphone. So we have to lend them a smartphone and we have to educate them about the smartphone, uh, not just about the app, but about the smartphone. So we have to educate them. This is the smartphone. This is how to use the smartphone. Smartphone has a WhatsApp. This is how to use the WhatsApp. You, this is an email. This is how to use an email. This is a Facebook. This is how to use a Facebook. So we created those accounts. Up until now, we actually have a database that consists their email address and their password. So anytime they forgot the password, they don't click forgot the password and open their email. They call us, hey, what, what's my password? Then we, we tell them about it. So that's okay. very data uh, privacy. We don't really understand about data privacy because that because we created their email accounts for them. So we have to educate them about how to use Facebook, how to use WhatsApp, how to use emails. 
because because for a simple reason like uh, in this in all of the app you know that three bars means settings you can open something right and then even the language the terms like settings means that you can open something that you can set but from the one that never use any smartphone you don't it's not intuitive for them that to see that this is this is settings that you can just open settings means something so you really have to uh, put them on the on that learning curve uh, to educate them so so even we do that to an extreme extent that we create uh, social media accounts, we created YouTube accounts for them. So when they're engaged with that smartphone and technology and use, getting used to that technology, and we introduce them with our app, and it's pretty easy uh, towards that. Cool. Um, uh, great. Then, then the, uh, Pablo, one of our students, he's also uh, creating a business with uh, technology uh, with a, with a uh, with a, a vending machine, um, and um, he is challenged by the fact that if he starts small, that others, if it's successful, will uh, um, uh, go faster and then take the market. Um, so uh, you started off with a prototype and you created your feeding machine. Um, how, how did you cope with the fear of another big company that would pick up your idea and then would scale it faster? Yeah, Are you yeah, ever yeah. In doubt of that, how did you cope with that? Uh, uh, definitely, definitely. There is has always been our fear since the beginning, uh, especially because, uh, like large companies, they own the market. And for example, we have uh, largest feed companies that own fifty percent of the market, which means they own fifty percent of the farmers. And then they are selling feed. Uh, when we create, they can easily uh, have uh, built the feed. Uh, machine business and it fits with what their market uh, and then they have the data they have the farmers they have the feed itself that they can bundle and they have the money definitely because it's public company and and multi-billion dollar company uh, group and then we definitely fear that uh, and even at some point one of those companies uh, big companies uh, we uh, con contacted us and then uh, offer us a uh, strategic investment in the early uh, phase in this either seed or service A, I forgot. So they offer uh, investment, uh, but they need exclusivity. Uh, what we did, we can't really give the exclusivity because we want to reach as many farmers as, well, um, as possible. We can't really just limit for certain brands. So we said no. And then he said, uh, the, the owner of the business said uh, to, to my face uh, back then, then hey, if you, uh, uh, let me put it simple for you. If you don't uh, uh, accept our offer, then I can just hire best engineers in Indonesia and build myself and I crush you to the ground. And then he said it literally that, that uh, to myself. And then uh, we, were, we were thrilled by that actually. Well, good. And then we get competition, bring it on. And then, but I'm, up until now, those companies uh, that threaten us to do that, they didn't have that product. We actually work synergically without any exclusive offer to them because we're we in the farmers level we're much bigger, uh, much better. And then it's also similar. Uh, we have multiple uh, stuffs like that. But you know, those companies they don't have that. Uh, and even right now we're we're helping them selling their feed. Uh, that we have that synergy to them. Uh, we're they they. They have been struggling selling fish uh, of, and try to build the, in the downstream level. We're right now even selling fish more than the largest uh, feed companies uh, in Indonesia. So I think it tells a lot. Uh, and then the main reason why is because uh, I think on, for the big companies, like a big uh, like tanker ship, right? So in order for them to move, they it's very hard. I mean, they really move the whole big companies. There's a thousands of people, a lot of board members, it's a public companies, a lot of other governance that, that built uh, in for transparency and compliance, but definitely not for flexibility and agility. And for startups, we design ourselves to be agile. Right? We are only a couple of people. Uh, we can, we're like a, like a jet ski. We can just move it ourselves anywhere possible. So we definitely can move faster than them, even if they have more money or resources. They don't; they're not designed, or uh, their organization is not designed. Their mindset is, is not designed for that. Their mindset is designed for a quarterly earnings predictability, not for an innovations and, and building new things. 
compared to ourselves, we design to survive, uh, to to thrive. Uh, so we we can do that. So that's one thing. And the second, and and I think it's more fundamental. It's we care more. They said that they want to build it. But I don't think that they spend nights to the farmer's house to just see whether the farmers can use the technology. Uh, they don't spend days and weeks to educate the farmers about the smartphone. Right? They don't care that much about it, but we care that much. And it, what's the make, makes the product works. It's not just cool. the money is not the most important part. The resources are not the most important part. So how you can build that organization and capabilities uh, and starting from caring much more than any other people in the, in the world. So that's yeah, why to the, extent, I think, to the extent that they actually trust you with your, with their passwords, passwords. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, I don't think uh, they'll give the other companies their passwords uh, to their email. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's uh, sort of the so thing. So. I think, also, I think this trust relationship that you built and also one of the barrier to entry for any company, including uh, big companies. I mean, big companies can say, I, 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 sell, I sell you feed, you want to buy this. But if, if the product's not working, if they have not, don't have that, good relationship they probably they buy fit from them they they wouldn't trust to buy this tech new tech innovation for them because there was there before so yeah yeah cool um let me check um yeah the, the uh, you now got uh, um, you just closed another round of investment um uh, did you get that from people uh, or investments that are also uh, fighting hunger in the world, or is it on to invest in technology-driven companies? Is it on your why, or is it uh, on, uh, on on companies uh, that uh, go in, in uh, the, the the figures and the technology part of your business? Yeah, I think it has to be both, uh, definitely, right? I mean, it, you, we want to be a mission-driven uh, tech company. Um, and we, in, in order to do that, you have to find the right balance uh, that when, not, not just the right balance, it's, a, it, it's the whole one bundle. When by providing tech solution and those tech solution can create values to the farmers and then creates value to the sector that can solving the hunger issues as well as create values to the company, then the company itself can have a, a, a can worth much more uh, because of that, because it creates more margin, has a strong growth, and so on. So it it, it, it has a stronger values on that. So uh, yeah, it's a bit both ways. I and mean, also answering to one uh, text, you know, in terms of the investment, how we're, we're spending the investment, it, it actually varies on, on different scales. On the seed round, definitely the main focus are how to finding the product and market fit. Uh, you, I, I already told the story when we started building uh, the scrappy MVP product until I, we reached one uh, point that we started commercializing. Then that's our main focus. We only focus for one early adopters, one specific uh, focus, then uh, try to find a product market fit from that. And then the service A, how to increasing that uh, growth and finding a new growth opportunities, increasing from just 100 users to thousands of users, from just hundreds of units to tens of thousands of units. So that's what we uh, did for the Series A round. While beside of that, we're trying to, uh, to try out new ideas uh, to adding more values and solving more problems. And then we, in the Series B, uh, we plan to scale out uh, the whole end-to-end -end model. So the fishery fund feed and fresh business is just started out uh, one and a half years, so specifically one years, but mostly on just on the pilot and commercial pilot. But using the series B round is 20 mil round, uh, then we want to increase that uh, reach and the scale as well. Uh, so operationally, we will be running operationally at scale. Uh, then we can uh, get much more, uh, much better unit economics in general. Cool. Very inspiring, uh, um, uh, Gibran. Thank you very much. Um, uh, last question, parting question uh, by uh, by Marco. Uh, what's the next problem you want to solve? And I think uh, partially answered that uh, with uh, uh, going into different markets. But is there another big problem you want to solve? Um, 
no, I think the hunger issues is a big problem, a big enough problem for, <laughs> for enough, me to right? solve in my lifetime. So if I can solve it in five years, then I probably uh, win a Nobel Prize or something. But but definitely it, it won't be right. I mean, it's just, it's it's such a a beauty of having a big ambition and a strong why. Uh, then you, you won't have any. Uh, you won't stop doing something because it's a big enough problems to solve it. And possibly in your lifetime, you wouldn't solve it, but it's the problem would better. Uh, the society is, is improved and the whole livelihood has changed. So that's practically it. So because we're, I'm, I'm literally shooting the dreams on the stars, then it will keep going towards it. And, and it's, it will, we will find out enough uh, problems to, to solve right now. So not, uh, we still focusing on on the fish farming sector uh, specifically on the market and the whole value chain and the main problem is how to and currently disrupt the whole value chain and the supply chain using technology which is quite challenging right now because we mainly focus in the farmers right now we stretch it out on the upstream and the downstream level so that's the problems that we probably will be solving in the three and the five years specifically in Asia then we we want to replicate it solving same problems in the other countries in the in the much uh, faster growth uh, trajectory and then afterwards then we will see what what problems that we have we will have in mind and then yeah as as the way that i operate uh, i don't really i'm not really a visionary leaders than i see like 20 30 years i'm quite an impulsive leader right i see a problems and an opportunity in, in front of me and then i i just seize it and then yeah, that's we'll see what what awesome. will happen in the future yeah cool Thanks, uh, thanks again, uh, Gibran, for uh, for sharing that. Uh, I know there is uh, uh, there are some questions from uh, from some of our students that we can't get to uh, right now. Um, uh, would you be open to uh, receiving some questions via email? Um, if, uh, for instance, we have some uh, questions from a student who wants to uh, start uh, the vending machine business, um, and he's wondering uh, with uh, how do you protect with patents and why should I or why should I not? Um, so others uh, are uh, really what you can do with data analytics in a business. Uh, would you be open to uh, uh, helping them out and see if you can uh, can give them some answers to uh, to help them uh, build their dreams? Sure, sure, definitely, definitely. Would would be open on that. So let me just give you my email address. Then reach me anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, big big hand guys, uh, all of you from all of you. Um, uh, for uh, for Gibran, thanks so much. Uh, good luck with your uh, your amazing mission, and uh, um, I uh, I really enjoyed your uh, your great talk. A uh, lot a lot of learnings in here uh, for uh, um, uh, that you also shared with your slide deck, um, and uh, uh, I think it's a great example of uh, um, having a big big mission, but uh, taking small steps and uh, and and, and c coping with the problems that you uh, encounter along the way. Uh, and it all started off with giving uh, a damn and, uh, and and setting your foot forward where uh, 199 others didn't. So uh, um, thanks so much. And uh, thanks for a very inspirational story. My pleasure. Thanks a lot for inviting. Thank you. Thank you, Jurgen. Again, uh, a really great, uh, great story. Thank you. Yes, definitely. And uh, yeah, I hope to speak to you uh, soon, uh, Gibran. I think we'll uh, catch up. Definitely, Jurgen. Catch up soon. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, guys, I, uh, um, uh, this is the end of this, uh, this session. I think uh, an amazing story, amazing learnings. Uh, please uh, make notes for yourself as well on what you take out of these sessions. Um, I think it's a great example of uh, 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 giving a damn and then uh, uh, also putting uh, your foot forward. So... Uh, um, I think there's a lot, a lot of learnings in here. Uh, enjoy the classes uh, tomorrow, and uh, um, uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely uh, uh, get back to you uh, um, uh, with uh, with other uh, speakers. Um, uh, and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing the impact of their learnings uh, in your steps moving forward. Good luck, and uh, see you guys. Have a great day. Ciao, ciao.